Welcome back to part two of the Q&A. I hope you did not miss me too much. However, I missed you deeply. Okay, we still have quite a few questions to get to, so let's just dive right in. People on other channels have mentioned you that you're a good CP. Well, thank you, I didn't know about that. That's really nice. I'm guessing it's Lainey because she's my only CP on AuthorTube. <laughs> What advice do you have for being a good CP? What kind of things do you look for when critiquing a book? How do you approach writing comments? How in depth do you go? For being a good CP, so I think that one of the most important things is not only pointing out the things that you think need fixed in a book, but the things that the author did well. I feel like I grow a lot from comments like that because then if someone's like, hey, this works really well, I really like this, then I can be like, great, that's working. I know to continue that whatever that thing is throughout the rest of the book and throughout my writing career because you're like, that worked, that's great. Also suggesting comments uh, instead of saying, you need to do this, saying one of my ideas for the way we could improve this is X, Y, Z. Uh, language is, I think, very important when you're dealing with something that someone holds so close to them. And a lot of times books can actually feel like part of our soul. <laughs> language is very, very important. And then what kind of things do you look for when critiquing a book? Um, just when I critique, I, I just look for anything that pops out. I mean, it's one of those things where you know it when you read it, you're like, that's off, you know? How do you approach writing comments? I think that's kind of, I, I answer that a little bit more. Like I try to do like 50-50 both critiques and like, hey, this is great, I love this, or squeal, or like insert hard eye emoji or you know, whatever. Um, and just uh, compliment sandwiches are also really nice. You start out like, hey, this is working great. I think we could just improve this a little bit. Here's my ideas, but overall you've got this, honey. <laughs> and how in depth do you go? For critique partners, I go very in depth. And I feel like in a way, I kind of like adopt their books as my own. Like they feel like my nieces and nephews, <laughs> the books do. And when they succeed, I feel like I succeed, like secondhand, you know what I mean? So I, um, I really treat them as if they were part of my own project. And so I, I go very in depth. Um, I think that's a personal choice. That's just what I do. What is the biggest challenge of writing middle grade? And what's the biggest challenge of writing YA? Well, <laughs> YA, I mean, my biggest challenge so far is I have not succeeded. <laughs> my first why I died in the query trenches and I'm trying to write my second one right now and maybe I do have a little bit of imposter syndrome about that I have been thinking like oh what if I'm not cut out for YA what if I can't do it I also was told a lot by both both uh beta critique partners and later agents that requested the book and then later rejected the full manuscript that my YA book that I was querying felt a lot like adult so maybe I have a hard time towing the line between like adult and YA voices. And I think that's, it's the same thing with middle grade. My biggest challenge is like making sure that I'm using words and phrases and thoughts that are understandable and age level appropriate. Of all of your current books, which is your favorite? You have to pick one. <gasps> Evil. I mean, are we including the Glass Witch since she's technically like often copy edits? I'm not, I'm not counting her because I'm not technically writing her. I'm gonna say taupe. I'm gonna say Tobe. Um, I'm gonna say that because it's middle grade, it's fun, it's goofy, it's spooky. It is like all about my love of the Addams Family and a series of unfortunate events. It deals with a little girl like learning how to deal with her disability. I don't know, it's just like very close to my heart. Do you like your birth month stone? Yeah, actually, um, it's okay. I don't have any like serious feelings about it. Uh, December is Zircon, Zircon, I think is how you say it. Ah, more boo-boo questions. Favorite crystals and why? And where's your midhaven in your chart? <gasps> so my midhaven is in Scorpio in my 11th house. If you're not into astrology, your midhaven is basically like your career and public life. Um, and mine's in Scorpio in my 11th house of like, uh, 11th house is like social, situations and friendships and like things like that um social networking and scorpio is like deep penetrating passionate so i feel like how i would interpret that is um my career and my public life is kind it kind of plays out through social networks and things i'm passionate about which totally makes sense i mean here i am on youtube and my favorite crystals oh my gosh okay let me find them my favorite crystals to wear are um labradorite these are cute little like crystal moon earrings that my husband got me uh i love them so much they're so sweet i have the selenite tower which i just love so much it feels so good just to hold it in your hand it fits perfectly in my fist and so <laughs> when i'm meditating i usually hold this and my other favorite crystal which is this like green blue fluorite this is for like 
concentration and peace and things like that so these are like the perfect duo for when i'm meditating i also just recently subscribed to the goddess provision subscription box that was like one of my little treats to myself for getting a book deal and um every month they send out like it's like a self-care box basically um with like woo woo stuff in it so the thing that we got for august was this little uh chakra tower wand thing it's a whole bunch of crystals and they are matched with each of your chakras so when i'm meditating and like aligning my chakras i i hold this it's really great channeled i'm vibing real high <laughs> please don't judge me or come after me about my woo woo beliefs um i'm sensitive and i will cry would you ever want to do a small video adaption to your stories oh my gosh i never thought about that that would be so fun that would be super cool if i could do some kind of like little book trailer to get people like really hyped how do you support yourself and your writing any newbie any advice for a newbie support like i'm assuming you mean financially uh i am supported by my husband my lovely husband i unfortunately cannot work there are a couple questions about like if i have a day job or not um unfortunately no i can't work i am disabled i haven't been able to hold down a job for about six years now uh so my lovely husband supports me um it's like kind of a privilege but not really because i'm disabled so it's it's a weird situation where most of the time when people have a spouse supporting them you'd be like oh yeah i'm privileged enough to be a full-time writer because i get you know taken care of through my spouse <laughs> but also it's not a privilege because i would love to be able to have a job oh my gosh i want to work in a library so bad you guys any advice for a newbie like a newbie writer complete a draft i think that's the most important thing you can do is make sure you finish a full draft because only then are you gonna have something new to uh fix and work on and i think it's just like an important skill to be able to acquire you know to to finish something uh if you want to do this professionally so that's that's the advice I would give. How has your book deal changed your relationship with beta critique partners, if at all? Um, honestly, not that much. I'm I'm pretty close to my critique partners, and yeah, I I wouldn't say really anything has changed. The only thing I could see changing in the future is that you know since I have like deadlines and things like that, or I will have deadlines in the future, um, I could see me being like, hey, like I if you want to read this, I appreciate it, but I need you to get it back to me within like three weeks or something like that. So I would have like more stringent deadlines. I think that would be the only difference. Pancakes or waffles? Ooh, I'm gonna say neither and say French toast. Are there any things specifically that have inspired any of your work in progresses? Definitely um, media that I love. The Glass Witch is pitched as Hocus Pocus meets Dumplin' and I love both of those, so it's definitely inspired by those. For the odd book, the kookiness and the dark humor of the Addams Family and the same with a series of unfortunate events, so that was definitely inspired by that. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go take a quick break to make a throat calming potion aka some uh, fresh echinacea from my garden and some honey because i'm talking a lot more than i normally do and i want to be able to keep going okay publishing industry info more depth query advice how to get faster results if possible Ooh, um i don't know if there is a way to get faster results i mean you could research on query tracker how long it takes certain agents to respond and you could query the fastest ones first i mean i think that's the only way you could control getting faster responses really i mean you can't control how fast someone's gonna get back to you more in-depth query advice i'm gonna send you again down below to my query playlist i don't give a lot of advice in general i usually just like share my own process um just because i'm so scared that what works for me may not work for someone else but i know alexa dunn has a ton of videos on querying so if you have not checked out her channel definitely do so which authors inspire you the most and why <gasps> so hard well currently with middle grade i really love jessica townsend the author of the nevermore series i just find her whimsy and like goofiness so inspiring any advice to someone who might want to apply to author mentor match do it <laughs> polish up your manuscript the best you can and uh get in there also i think author mentor match one of the best things about it is um just the community like making friends like i said i found a critique partner through there and many beta readers actually uh so my biggest advice would be to number one do it and number two really get involved in the community because if you make it or not you still have the community connections you know did you always feel confident about your writing i don't know i i feel like i i did always feel confident about my writing um which is a very odd thing <laughs> to say uh, I definitely still have imposter syndrome and like confidence issues with other things, but it's like the one thing I feel like I, 
I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm that phrase, jack of all trades, master of none. You know that phrase where it's like, I can do a lot of things. Like I can kind of sing, I can kind of draw, I can kind of paint, I can kind of play sports, but like there was nothing I was great at. Whereas with writing, it just, even though there are difficulties and there are struggles and stuff, it just feels like this is what I was meant to do. How many drafts did you go through before querying your books? So with When the Sea Came For Us, uh, my YA fantasy, that was seven drafts. And with The Glass Witch, that was four drafts. Eddie Sanchez says, hi, just wanted to let you know what an inspiration you are. How are you doing? Well, thank you, Eddie. That's actually very sweet. I'm doing quite well today. I'm, I'm feeling very well. I've had quite a good month actually pain wise i'm on my sixth pain free day right now this month which is like huge for me i'm very excited about it and emotionally i'm feeling very well thank you thank you for asking <laughs> what are the middle grade and why books that influenced your writing middle grade i've already talked quite a bit about the series of unfortunate events and the whimsy from jessica townsend and nevermore as for ya uh i actually don't have any good answers for YA books that influence my writing um, i'm sure they all did in some way because every book you read you learn something new from right so i'm sure there's an answer tips for developing a villain or villains motivations Ooh, that's a really good question definitely make them realistic one of my favorite tips is from uh, john truby's book anatomy of story where he talks about for your villains their motivations and reasons why they are villainous should be almost correct like 99 percent morally correct but there's just that one percent that slips them over the edge just the slightest bit in a certain mindset you could believe them you could be on their side and i really really like that um having a villain that has both light and darkness is really really interesting and so i would say always look for nuance always make them as complex as your main character you could even maybe have your main character like agree with some of the parts of the villain's argument for why they're villainous, but just not like one specific part, you know, that really kind of tears them apart. I think that's that's a good villain right there. Biggest surprise, feeling-wise, post getting an agent and a book deal? Probably fear. <laughs> I can't just fiddle fart around with writing anymore. I have deadlines. I would owe people money if i didn't turn in a book do you know that you're living the dream has it sunk in yet you know sometimes it does it's one of those things where sometimes i have to i get so caught up in the work and doing the editing and um, making youtube videos and doing all the little administrative stuff now that comes with being an author that i kind of get so caught up in that that i don't take a moment to like breathe and be like you did it like you're there uh so yeah I, I i do have to slow down and take a minute and like remind myself i i achieved my dream where did you get your glasses chains okay so i get all my glasses chains from etsy do you have many critique partners or belong to a writing group i don't belong to a writing group i would love to belong to a writing group but i don't <laughs> but i do have two critique partners uh laney cress has a channel i will link her down below she's great and uh, my other critique partner jessica is on twitter and she's got like a big platform over there she does the good twitter stuff i i can't figure it out important qualities in an agent able to sell your book meaning that they're at a reputable agency uh, you can find out if they're reputable by checking query tracker.net um that's a very good resource best book you've read recently Ooh, uh i read good night beautiful which is an adult thriller i really enjoyed it was super super twisty me and marvin gardens which is a middle grade by as king who, who wrote dig you can't see it. it's right here that was my favorite book of last year and then she wrote a middle grade and it's so good the voice is so good i loved it so much <laughs> do you have any new fugglers if so what are their names let me go grab him everyone meet chauncey i got him from a creator on etsy he loves detective mysteries and eating mushrooms and just silently judging me from his spot in the corner. We'll put him right there so he can judge you too. How do you navigate your friendships on YouTube now that you have a book deal and they are still waiting for their moment? Honestly, I, I feel like I don't navigate it any differently. I don't feel like I need to tiptoe around them and I don't feel like they need to tiptoe around me. Like, I feel like there is definitely, um, you can feel happy for someone and still be like, man, why hasn't it happened for me yet? You know, <laughs> that's how I felt about all of my friends who had agents or book deals before I had that. But yeah there's there's nothing really to navigate because we're all friends we all like support each other which is a great thing but i don't know we just keep encouraging each other and like we celebrate when we all get wins dream book launch tell us about it <gasps> oh i haven't even thought about this i guess I, i'm not even like letting myself think about all of the fun juicy stuff because it doesn't even 
that part doesn't even feel real, I guess. I don't know. But my dream book launch would be <laughs> people, first of all, actually showing up <laughs> and it being in person. COVID is miraculously gone and real people other than like my family show up and like children, like somehow children find out about my book and they show up. That's my dream launch. Favorite herb. Thank you, Hudson, for asking. I use rosemary the most out of any herb i love rosemary it has such like mm, a smelly gentle like but yet powerful feel to it i love putting it in teas my very favorite like potion <laughs> is chamomile tea and put a sprig of rosemary in there it's so good it like has this beautiful light floral taste with just like a hint of earthiness it's beautiful it's like drinking a forest meadow in a cup I love it. What do you like to do outside of reading and writing? Well, right now my current obsession is The Sims. I love watching YouTube. I love taking care of my plants and like being out in my garden and hiking. I adore hiking. It's like one of my favorite activities to do. What does an ideal author career look like to you? Oh no, I don't know. Um, I am healthy enough to write like two books a year and support myself off of my writing and having an office where I just like type all the time. That's my ideal <laughs> author career. I, you know, I would love the movie deal and um, you know, like the huge signing and the, all of that stuff. I dream big, but I also dream of simplicity. How do you push through the middle of your first draft? Also, how do you find writer friends? I kind of already talked about writer friends. You find them on like social medias. That's how I found all of mine. And as for pushing through the first draft, I don't know. I don't, I don't have any magical advice. I just do it. I just make myself do it. Like just pop on stool. <laughs> do you think you'll ever write an adult book? I sure hope so. I don't have any planned like in the next 10 years but I, I would really like to branch out and try adult one day. When you began working with an editor, did you change your revision process in any way to accommodate? The only thing I think I changed was my editor preferred to work in Google or in uh, Word docs while I work in Google docs. Like that's really the only thing that made my revision process change. Future plans on book tours and signings. I have none. <laughs> um, I need to get in touch with a publicist to figure out that kind of information. Also, I just don't know with COVID, like everything's just up in the air right now. How many books have you written total in your life? To completion? If we're counting first drafts, uh, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna be finishing Project Pyro here soon. So that will be five, hopefully by the end of this month. Hopefully. Favorite coffee drink? Black, straight coffee. Like as dark and hairy as you can get it. Like I want it so dark, it'll put hair on my chest. Who thought your dreams would come true first, you or your husband? Okay, I, I feel like I thought they would come true first, but he is the one who never stopped believing in me. Like even when I would be like, I can't do this, I'm too sick, I suck, I can't write things that are marketable, I'll never get an agent. He's like, yes you can, shut up, <laughs> keep going, shut up. What's your favorite season? Probably fall, but I really love winter too. How did you decide that Samantha was the right agent and the right one to query too. Well, she's at a really great agency. Root Lit is like fantastic. So I knew I would want to query someone from there. And she was a bit of a newer agent, which is good. Most of the time when you query newer agents, they'll get back to you faster because they're hungrier and they want to like build their client list up really fast. Um, and she already had sales, which was really awesome for being a new agent and having sales. So I knew that she was the right one to query and uh she was the only one that offered so that's how i knew that she was the right agent to go with <laughs> and i believe the last question i have is what does your brainstorming process look like i actually have a video on that so i'll, I'll link it down below but the tldr is chaotic <laughs> if i didn't answer yours specifically it's probably because i got two of the same and i just kind of morphed them together or i'm just a ditz and totally missed it <laughs> feel free to leave more comments down below if i skipped yours or you're just dying to know something but now i want to know something about you guys okay let's see let's play would you rather oh this is one of my favorite ones to ask okay would you rather find a thousand cockroaches living in your attic or one person let me know in the comments below anyways thank you guys so much for watching and for sending in all of your lovely questions i really had fun just chatting with you guys don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye